We're about to see a wave of bankruptcies like we've never seen before, which are going to expose many of the badly run businesses in America. No one's really talking about this from an overall perspective. There are certain categories. Erica Williams and Hood Estates keep talking about, like, based to hear Erica and Hood Estates talk, you would think that 80 to 90 percent of the trucking businesses are badly run. I don't know. I'm not into trucking, but I keep posting stuff that they're saying that truckers are catching it hard, and I get keep getting truckers and stuff chiming in that things are rough and I keep getting these two who's like, hey, it's all fine. I don't know, I'm not in trucking, but I do know businesses. And this is one of the worst problems that happens is people have not been taught how to run their business. There's the first battle of getting your business started, getting customers, making money, and then there is another level of education that many business owners don't have. Like I would give you a classic example. Let's say you have business owner A, his name is Shane. Shane's business does $3 million a year in profit. I want you to put in the comments how much money out of that $3 million should Shane put in his pocket. This is really, really interesting. So I'm gonna get that answer a little bit later. But Shane has been running this business. Shane has been running, working really hard. And Shane is married to a sexy, slim, slim Susan who don't work. So go ahead and put all that in there because I have seen this happen with many business owners who were married to a high consumption wife who wanted the house, who wanted the car, who didn't want to work. And I've literally seen these type of women run these guys out of business. But go ahead, put in the comments how much Shane should take out of those $3 million. And also, where should Shane put some of the $3 million. Because this is one of the things that I saw in the storage auction business over and over and over again, that people who had good businesses would take too much money out of the business. This is one of the things that I've learned. Like when I was doing eBay and I knew and I knew and I knew that having 75% of our profits come from one revenue source was extremely dangerous, I still did it, even though I knew better. Because eBay was so easy, it was, it was, we were able to set it up, we were able to put the stuff on eBay, get the sales, have the money go through PayPal. It was so easy. And you know, we as humans like to do things that are easy. We don't like to take the path of hard resistance. And I knew that at some point that there was gonna be a problem because I was educated better. I was trained on how to set up a business. So essentially, you don't want all of your revenue coming from one source. That can be really dangerous at some point because if that revenue source disappears, you're out of business. So this is why after eBay did what they did, I went ahead and crunk up, you know, this is how the, the book Pimping Craigslist for Fun and Profit came out to be. Um, we were able to get eBay down to 30% of our overall revenue, get Craigslist to 30%, get the upscale garage sale to 30%, and then Amazon represented about nine to 10%. So we were well more evenly distributed with our revenue streams in case something funky happens. We did not go through a situation where all of our income was eradicated like in the case with eBay representing 75% of our income. This created calamity. This was a cataclysmic moment. This created a lot of bad outcomes. So hopefully you put down 
in the comments what Shane should have done with the three million dollars. At the most, Shane should have took two hundred and fifty thousand to five hundred thousand. I know you're going, but but he made three million dollars profit. Well, once again, out of that three million dollar profit, he was going to have to pay under current um, tax guidelines. 21% in taxes. So that was going to be like $600,000 in taxes. And since, you know, Shane has an LLC and it's a pass through entity, that was going to be the taxes. So he should have taken 250,000 to 500,000, paid 6 to 700,000 dollars in taxes. And where would a sh where would Shane have put the rest of this money? Shane should have put a million in a savings account. Now, why would Shane be doing that? Because Shane pays six hundred thousand dollars in taxes. Shane takes two to five hundred thousand, so that's one point one million. So that's going to leave one point nine million exactly. So Shane should have took a million dollars, put this in a savings account for a rainy day, part of one of his business structure accounts, and then he should have took the other. 900,000 and put it back in his business. Why would he take the 900,000? Because Shane would be able to grow the business because this year the business did 3 million. If Shane was to take $900,000, put it back in the business and put this into marketing next year, Shane could probably do five or 6 million. See, this is how the game is played. And this is why so many businesses fail because the business owner can't keep his hands out of the kitty. This is one of the things that I see over and over again. I've had this issue with consulting clients when I'm like, okay, yeah, you got a lot of money, but you can't touch it. What do you mean I can't touch this, Glendon Cameron? That's my money. My business made that money. My baby needs a new fur coat. Look, Jamal needs some Similac. They come up with all of these excuses where they don't want to practice proper financial segmentation. You can't take all of the money out of the business because in business, there are cycles, there are ebb and flow. And when the good times are good, you need to be putting some of those acorns up in the tree. So, Let's say Shane, you know, this year he did 3 million. Next year he did 5 million. Okay, 5 million. So Shane would be paying 21%, like a G. He would be paying a million bucks on that 5 million in taxes. So that leaves 4 million. Now this year, Shane could take out a million dollars. He could easily take out a million dollars, take another million, put it in the bank, take another million and, and invest it in the business. And then the third year, Shane does nine million. So this is, well, you know, because systematically, Shane will be able to take more and more money out of the business because the business is making more money. But let's go ahead and go back to this year where Shane made the three million and Shane paid 600,000 in the taxes and Shane took 2.4 million. Shane took a lot of trips. He got sexy, slim Susan fur coats. He bought her a Ferrari. He got the big house. Oh yeah, and Shane didn't pay nothing in cash. Shane went out and got a big old mortgage, you know, for about 3 million. And next thing you know, next year, because Shane made no investments back in his business, Shane only made 1.5 million. But now Shane has a lifestyle that is predicated on taking 2.4 million out the business. So Shane is now starting to run into some problems. And this is what you're going to start seeing all across America. Take Apple. Apple has 200 billion plus they borrowed another 8 billion in the bank. Apple is going to be fine. Why? Because when times were good, they stashed money away for the bad times. But Shane, now this next year, he only made 1.5 million. Shane is struggling to pay his bills. Shane is overextended on credit. 
All his credit lines are maxed out. He's trying to get more credit. All because Shang did not invest money back in his company when times were good. This is one of the reasons that you're going to see this rolling wave of bankruptcies is because many business owners do not practice financial protocols, the proper financial protocols for their business. They taken all of the money out the business, they're deducting everything. So when they try to go get a loan from the bank, it's like my business did 1.5 million, but the taxes you filed on this business only said that you made 100K. We could give you a loan based on the 100K of revenue, but we can't give you a loan based on the 1.5 million of generated income. And you know, those business owners are just like, but I did 1.5 million. But you didn't pay taxes on 1.5 million. And that's what the bank's going to loan you the money on. See, th this is the, the, the whole game. You've got to have the proper financial structure set up for your business. Then you need to practice the fi proper financial protocols. Like you need QuickBooks. Whether you're gonna have a CPA or QuickBooks, you need someone crunching the numbers, looking at what you're doing, and reporting back to you that, hey, B hey Mr. Business Owner, this is where you are this month. Every quarter, you should know what your P&L is, how much money you're making, how much money you're losing, where your money is, to keep your business financially healthy. And a good many business owners don't do this. Let me tell you a little story. Uh, I got one of my consulting clients, hey boo, here from YouTube, who had a $5 million a year e-commerce business. This person did not have a corporate structure. This $5 million e-commerce business was a sole proprietorship and they had one checking account. And when I got to him, dude had a hot little wife. She was so sexy and she didn't work and whatever he wanted because you know he's doing five million a year amazon which really represent only he was only pulling home like five hundred thousand. because see when you when you have an amazon e-commerce business and you know this this is one of my biggest knocks with the fba like yeah man i'm doing 100k a month how much is that is net oh that's only 10 to 15k net so you're really gonna make 185. You're not going to make a million this year. You're, you're gonna generate net revenue of over a million, but your profit, because your margins are piss small, are only gonna be this. So he goes ahead, he, he gets into, cause you know, Amazon started to turn on him. Amazon started to, to narc out on him and he was starting to see a erosion of profitability. But he had this hot little wife, you know, he was an older dude. He was like 50, his wife was like 22, and she was real cute, and she had the, the big boobies and all of this stuff. And he was just like, well, she asked, I just give her. And he got himself in a situation where his money from Amazon wasn't enough to support the lifestyle that they were creating. And you know, he had been watching the YouTube videos, and he had been watching the YouTubes, and he came to me and he said, like, all right, so the first thing, I gotta do is put you on the budget. He was like, what? So you need to go on the budget of 100K a year. He was like, what? I was like, yeah, because this disaster that you've created, it's gonna take us about a year or two to clean this mess up. Also, you need to get this business out of your name. Cause he had actually had run into a lawsuit that had cost him $50,000 because they were able to come after him versus the risk being encapsulated in the LLC. So we had to set him up a holding company, we had to set him up an operating company, we had to go ahead and change all this stuff with Amazon. It was real easy, go in there in the dashboard, update, put his EIN, take his social security number out, got him set up with a CPA, and then, you know, because you know, his cute little wife, you know, instead of him working on his business, he was at home giving her the sausage. 
You know, he he's like, yeah, a lot of days I don't even go to work. You know, you know, she's so sexy, so sexy. So, all right, you know, it ain't this ain't time for play play. You you can't be play playing during business operating. So, I mean, I had to go ahead do the corporate, go ahead put dude on the schedule, go ahead and assign dude new tasks. And I was like, well, the first thing you got to do is you got to find more products because you are suffering an erosion of profitability. So we got him on the f a fact finding mission. We got him a VA in the Philippines whose sole job was to find products. That's all she did. And then within eight months, we actually was able to turn this from a $5 million a year business to a $20 million a year business dramatically increasing his margins and because the thing is you know we were starting to look at like because there was one product that he was selling that he was literally losing money on it's like we gotta get rid of that and it was just it was the craziest thing because you know his little sexy little wife just just you know his his brain was in his penis because that's, that's apparently where it went because i mean i just couldn't understand this whole thing so in eight months, we got it to 20 million a year. We got a new product mix. We brought on new employees. We changed the corporate structure. Essentially, we took his janky, shabby business and turned it into a real business where he was able to go ahead, hire another VA to fulfill his role and do the things he was able to do. And within two years, he was having more money than he knew what to do with. He still had the little sexy little wife and he was still giving her the sausage in the middle of the day. But now this, this business was properly structured, had proper standard operating procedures, had proper protocols, was making more money. And then we got him to create a website. And we got him to start running traffic to this website to dampen his dependence upon the Zon. And he's like, oh man, this is really cool. You know, we're getting orders every day. We're making money every day from the website. It was just like, he was so excited. And the, the little sexy wife, she was just jumping up and down on his pogo stick all along like, oh man, you're the man, you're the man, you're the man. And this is a, a cautionary tale to why I always tell you guys, don't quit your job. See, running a business is a multitude of many, many different skill sets. And you don't have some of those skill sets right now. I'm not saying you stupid. What I'm saying is you've got to give yourself time to grow into that role. That's what I'm saying. You've got to give yourself the situation, and you gotta give yourself room to acclimate because for the average person, like see my video, hookers and blow, that's what the average person is gonna do if they come into a lot of money just like that. That's what they're gonna be doing. Hookers and blow, stupid stuff, um, buying chihuahuas, buying llamas and stuff, because they, they have no sense of priority of money. And this is why the average business owner gets into so much trouble because they can't take their hands out of the till. They can't stop taking money and converting it to their personal life. And they don't leave any money in the business to support the business. And this is one of the worst things that you can do this is one of the worst situations that you can create because your business needs money to grow. And this is why as a business owner, you need to put yourself on a budget. You need to put yourself on a salary and that's it. Even if you've got $4 million in the business bank account, you need to take your hands off of it. I mean, this is, this, this is one of the hardest things because I had another consulting client who had a partner who would just literally go to the bank, 
pull out 100, 200, 300K, go out and buy a new car, be sipping pink lemonade with his little big booty Betty. It, I mean, he was just like, hey, you know, because we were working on the plan and then, you know, there was an expectation that was half a million dollars in the bank. He just went in the bank and took 200K cash out. Now, let me tell you why this is a problem. Do you understand that when you go to the bank and you put $10,000 in the cash money in the bank or more, that they fill out a report and send it to the Internal Revenue Service? Do you understand that if you take more than $10,000 out of the bank, they also send that same report? And dude was doing this two, once or twice a month. And then that, there was a tax issue that we had to solve and we had to hire a CPA, get the CPA to work on it. And even before they filed taxes, I knew that they were gonna to have to pay back taxes. So we went ahead and filed and the number was ugly. It was like $860,000. We got this clown over here going in and just pulling out racks on racks on racks, buying Ferraris and stuff. And he was just like, you know, it, it, it was a disaster, man. It, it was just a disaster. And one of the things that you have to understand is as a business owner, you go through a grooming process. And this is one of the reasons that there are so many unsuccessful business owners because they can't keep their hands off the money. It's like, oh, there's money there. Let me go buy a new car like Omni and the Hellcat. This is the greatest examples of hooker and blow. This dude had created a system that put $35 million in his bank account. What was he doing? Going out buying a new car every day. What was, he was not investing in the stock market. He was, you know, I, I keep hearing this thing about rentals. And I'm like, I don't know about the rentals. And right now he hasn't made videos in like two months and people are like, oh, um, he's still making money. He, you see, hookers and blow. This is why so many people supported the grass, the gross extravagance of Omni and the Hellcat. That's the life they want to live. Just have money, spend money, don't care. Oh, I'm going to buy me a new Ferrari today. And essentially I was just sitting there like, how many cars, you know, if you were going to have a bunch of cars, if you were a car collector, I can see it. And right now there is a uh, tall guy reviews and Mr. Organic and Mr. Organic just bought a Rolls Royce Wraith. And I understand why they do it because that's how they keep their channels going. But Omni was a prime example of what happens when you as a business owner has no financial sense. Because, you know, he's like, oh, he's trying to do this other stuff. He's trying to, you know, his assistant, you know, she's making big investments. You know, it's pretty interesting. This chick doesn't have any displayable source of income, but she's buying Omni cars. She's investing a lot of money in the business. And I'm just sitting there like, see, I'm a business owner. I can look at the numbers and stuff. And I'm sitting there like, I feel that the feds have shut him down. And you know, once again, this is what happens because see, it, let, me, let me tell you if I was Omni's financial consultant, when he had that $35 million in the bank, I would have instantly converted that into LLCs, holding companies, and diverted that money to income producing assets that were not in Omni's names. Omni has children. I would have put that money in a custodial trust fund for his kids. Guess what? The feds could have never touched that money. They couldn't have touched it. Oh, it ain't, you know, it been out his name for X amount of months and years. But once again, for the lack of knowledge, we perish. I would have set dude up where he would still have the $35 million and he would still have income coming in and it, none of this stuff if it had happened, he wouldn't have been, he wouldn't have been touched. He wouldn't have been losing stuff. Cause see, th this is one of the things you have to understand that when you get that type of money and you get it from a dubious source, 
because you know he keeps saying I've done nothing wrong. He committed copyright infringement. He committed what could be called structuring. Uh, this is a form of money laundering. And you know, because he didn't know what he was doing, he did this stuff and now he's like, I ain't do nothing wrong, I ain't do nothing wrong. I, they, they just came after me because I'm stunting. No, you, di you did things wrong, Omni. And you did not have the proper people behind you. You didn't have the right CPA behind you. You didn't have the right attorney because if someone, if Omni it came to me like, hey man, I got this thing and I don't know how long it's gonna keep making money. I was like, okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start converting that money right now, today, put this in custodial accounts for your kids, put this in custodial accounts for friends and family that you trust, so it can't be taken, man. Now, I'm gonna give you proof positive of this. What's the dude's name? Uh, not Michael Milken, but um, this, this dude. I'll put up his picture, because uh, I, I don't know his name. But a cinch, Bernie Madoff, Bernie's Madoff's wife and sons had millions of dollars that the feds were not able to touch because it, it wasn't in Bernie's name. But see, you got to understand the game, to know the game, to play the game. And I would have set up Omni um, so tight he wouldn't be sitting there crying the blues and all this other stuff. But this is what happens when a financially non-sophisticated person enters a lot of money. Omni had that money for five years and he lost it. Five years, no generational wealth, no setup, and he keeps making all these videos like, oh man, all the people who were, who were with me when they had the money, they disappeared and all this other stuff, because you didn't have the proper team around you. But this is the story of many business owners. So for those of you who want to be set up right, I'm getting ready to start doing some new stuff. And go below, get the art of holding. I'm going to give you a little bit off. And we're going to start talking about business for the folks who want to properly set up and structure their business. Links below. Go ahead and get that. And we're going to start tightening up your business game.